Hello, everyone, and welcome back. My name is Dylan. I'm Gutter. I'm Gabriel. And I'm Ben. And this is Reality with a Twist. It sure is. How are we all doing today, boys? You know, oh. I was doing okay, but then I remembered a little something about the current state of Dylan right now. <laughs> What's what, what about me? What's I'm just the same old Dylan as always. What could be possibly wrong with me? Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for those who maybe didn't catch the last episode, Dylan lost an odds and he is currently butt out Bruh. naked uh, on his chair uh, recording. So he's going to be naked the entire podcast, uh, just so you guys know. So when you hear him say something, just know that he was naked when he said it. Yeah. So Ima- that, that Ima- would be funny. yeah. Ima- imagine like you're afraid of public speaking and you and someone tells you just imagine the crowd naked. Just reverse that, but imagine the host naked, you know? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, we have a very interesting topic to, you know, talk about today, but before we jump into that, I believe someone here has a Jeremy story that Ooh. they'd like to share because we just- do not have a Jeremy update this week. Sadly, not just a Jeremy story, just a, a little tradition that Jeremy and I used to have back in high school. So uh, sometimes when we were bored late at night or maybe we stayed in radio till 8 or 9 p.m., uh, we just kind of look at each other and be like, hey, let's just go to Kroger, buy some junk food and then try it. So we we just drive in one of our cars over to the Kroger that was literally like three minutes away find the most unique junk food we could find. So like weird chip flavors, weird cookies, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Drive back to the school parking lot when it was absolutely empty. And then just go one at a time, trying some random junk food uh, at around, I think we usually did it till like one or 2 AM even sometimes. Um, We just try some random junk food and have super deep conversations about uh, just how we were mentally. And then, you know, just talking to each other, having a heart to heart uh, we did it quite a few times, two or three times, and and all of those are very, very near and dear to me because those are all very good memories with Jeremy. Nice. Yeah. That is really nice. Yeah. Jeremy is just such an awesome guy because he, he would be the type of person to just give you the time of day to talk about whatever yeah. is on yeah. your mind. And unfortunately, uh, he doesn't have any more time of day because he's dead. Yeah. He's, he's no, dead. Yeah, six feet him. under. Six yeah. feet under. <laughs> uh, yeah. Every day it feels like he's still here, but I just look at the ground and I realize he's there. He's, he's down there, yeah. He's down there. <laughs> for, oh. yeah, we mean the ground too. Yeah. By the way. Yeah, of course. Not anywhere else. Anyway, um, <laughs> so as for today's topic of the show, I first want to ask e- you guys a question. Yes. Okay. While while you're driving, what is one thing that you hate? Oh, oh my gosh. I, I've been thinking about this so much lately. I cannot stand when people like fly up behind you and then mm-hmm. just swerve in the other lane without even using their turn signal. Like, yep. like you're the problem. Oh, that is definitely a very big issue and one I have encountered many times. How about you, Gaber Gunner? Oh, uh, I hate this. So I have many, many things, but something I've been noticing more recently is I usually... I'm in the passing lane, so the leftmost lane. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. if I'm if I'm going faster than other people, that is. And uh, I usually go maybe five or ten max over the speed limit to you know pass when I want to pass. But the thing I hate the most is when I'm in the left lane and somebody comes flying up to me, but doesn't give me enough time to get over for them, and then they just oh. go around me. Like I'm I'm in the process oh. of getting over into the right lane so they can pass me, but then they without using their turn signal half the time go into the right lane to pass me on the right. Um, so, so just I, illegally right, illegally passing someone on the right hand side. Yeah. And it's like, you, you can make the argument that it's my fault. Cause I'm not, you know, going the speed of sound in the fast lane, but I was going to get over for them. If they just gave me a few more seconds to get over, I was literally in the process of getting over for them. Right. I, and then I think one of my <laughs> least favorite things uh, is people that hang out in the uh, passing lane in the left lane. Um, that's just irritating to me because the right lane is meant for those kind of people, especially when it's like, they're just hanging out in the, uh, like in the left lane and the, like the right lane is also completely open. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't make any sense. You're and right. then I also 
I don't know why. I mean, maybe this is a bit of a stigma with truck drivers. Mm. Uh, evidently, they truck drivers, uh, not semi trucks. We're talking like Ram 1500s and yeah. Ford F-150s and yep. Chevy Silverados feel that the rules of traffic do not apply to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's terrible. I, I definitely don't like those areas on the road where you have to like slow down, but I, I typically don't. And then like there's like just like a bunch of these speed bumps after I, I think it's like a shoal zone or something. <laughs> you guys I encounter those? Those, uh, those moving speed bumps. Yeah, those like moving. Like they're very inconsistent, too. And, yeah, like I hear screaming afterwards. It's. Yes. really really weird but anyway that's not the point of, that's not the topic of today's uh show these shul zones today's topic is a sure. thing that i think you guys have all had many issues with but you didn't seem quite you didn't mean you really bring it up and that is traffic yeah because i i'm sure all of us here at this point have had to deal with some pretty pretty bad traffic while driving 465 <laughs> I'm gonna say 465. 465 indeed. Um, Just downtown Indy. Yeah. I guess, I guess I got I mean that kind of segues into the next thing I was going to ask you guys as part of our little open bit section of the show. And that has been like what has been each of your guys' worst experience with traffic? It doesn't have to be specifically in Indy, it could be wherever you're driving to, whether it be for like a trip or with family, or you weren't even like the person driving. Just like mm-hmm. What is like one time you that traffic has been the absolute worst? Hmm. I um, will say Chicago. <laughs> I refuse to go to Chicago uh, just because I don't want to drive in it. So if I go to Chicago, I want to take a train up there. Um, I, I, don't, see. I don't want to drive to Chicago. I've heard a lot of bad things about Chicago, both from other people and my own personal experience of having yes. to go, go to Chicago a couple times of my own. Mm-hmm. Stressful. Um, definitely is. What about you, Gun? What about you, Gunner or Ben? I think I don't know. This might be an unpopular opinion. I think campus driving, especially like during like school time, is is the worst mm. because. Um, not so much other cars, but just pedestrians. There's so much you have to look, uh, like look for. Yeah. Even when just driving, when there are no crosswalks, people will just run right in front mm-hmm. of you. I mean, it's happened to me so many times. I think it might be a bit worse for Purdue because it's a bigger school and also like the right. campus is shaped like a square. I think that might have something to do with <laughs> it because Ball State is more of like a straight line. Like it's like an L shape. So like the campus is an L. So, like, there's only two roads that you really go on. But with Purdue, I feel like it's a square, so there's more, like, crossroads going through it. Exactly. Yeah, I also feel like Ball State campus is an L. <laughs> yeah, kind of, big, kind of big L. I, I yeah. did that to myself. Oh, no. <laughs> Ball, the Ball State slander. Ball State. <laughs> But I mean, I, I definitely get I don't think I've had that really occur to me when I was going to you know school because typ- I had, I was on a private campus and typically all the campus traffic was more, you know, n- more easily to take in. I ha- driving through Evansville was the worst part of it because, you know, it's pretty much driving through a through downtown, but like at a m- much more mild tone. Mm-hmm. Um, what yeah. about you, Ben? Um. Well, I guess um, I would say, and mine is on a, a much smaller scale than than your guys's, but just leaving the parking lot of our high school oh. after school. Oh, oh. That, okay. You know what? I, I that is like, oh, that was bad. Was That's dangerous. something that all of us can speak on for saying that was. Oh, that was horrible. And now you're not allowed to turn left. I saw that. Yeah. I did. I Which, saw thank that. Thank God. Recently. Thank God. Um, oh, that would that would add minutes. <laughs> One person turning left would add minutes to your commute. Because oh yeah, oh it was horrible. Yeah, uh, uh, just to I, 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 since I only said Chicago earlier, I want to get a little bit more specific. Uh, and not even Chicago. I, I just I, I want to say like 465 in general. I know I mentioned it earlier, but uh, since 465 is like a ring, uh, ring interstate, like a loop interstate, for some reason traffic is always always worse on it um so i just 465 in general is just horrible Mm -hmm. 
I'm for sure. sure. I'm I'm surprised, Gabe, you didn't mention Toronto and the traffic there. Really? I mean, okay, so I think we just went because we went. It was a weekday, right? It was. I believe it was a weekday. It was like we got there two. No, we we got got there there Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it was three p.m. So I mean, it shouldn't have been rush hour, but I'm I'm just thinking maybe there's an accident up ahead. I don't want to judge the entire. Like that was a horrible, horrible experience with traffic, but I feel like 465 is more consistently bad uh, because on the way out of Toronto, it was smooth as butter getting out. Like there were no real traffic delays at all. It was just getting into Toronto that sucked. Fair enough, I guess. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess moving on from our own little personal rant about our terrible traffic experiences Mm -hmm. let's dwell dwell more into the educational part about traffic and traffic jams in particular Mm -hmm. and in this part i will actually be quizzing you you fine gentlemen about many Mm -hmm. various traffic related questions and there will be a point system obviously and the person who you know has the most points by the end of this quiz section will win Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Ten whole. That'll get me through college. Exactly. (laughs) I I've seen produce produce tuition is definitely not cheap. I mean, seven fifty. Come on. (laughs) But this will cover. This will cover it. This will cover (laughs) it indeed. Alrighty, so let's go hop right into traffic. I'm trying to think of a clever name for traffic and quiz mixed together to sound like a cool game show name do you guys have any ideas what? no come and okay go. cool oh. come, yeah, yeah come and go, come and go. <laughs> all right the first question of come and go <laughs> i don't like this <laughs> <laughs> we don't even have come and goes in Indiana. I just think it's a funny name. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about the sto- the play the shop. I was thinking of come and go is funny. Yeah, oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and <laughs> anyway, um, let's get into some of the questions. So, first question relates to the average time a U.S. commuter spends per year in traffic in amount of hours. So. There are four options on the table here for how many hours that is. And this is, once again, per year. So, like, not month, just the whole year in general. Mm -hmm. Does the average U.S. commuter spend 36 hours, 54 hours, 72 hours, or 108 hours in traffic per year? I'm going to say 108. Let me do some 108 calculations here. Let me crunch the numbers. (laughs) I'm going to say 108 as well. 108 as well? Yep. What about you, Ben? Um, just because I don't want all our eggs in one basket, I'm going to say 72. 72? Hmm. You guys yeah. are all too critical on traffic for some reason. Because huh. typically, on average, the, n- the normal time a U.S. commuter spends in traffic per year is only 54 hours. Only huh. <laughs> over two days. <laughs> Uh, two whole days i mean i can understand why you guys probably thought much higher just because when you're are in traffic it feels like an eternity oh it does pretty much it, fe- it, it feels like it could have been much more than just the hours that i had listed in my answer if i had not stated them mm-hmm. so i totally totally understand it right so on to our next question here in the come and go traffic mania game show <laughs> now sorry i lost track of my question anyway here we go did you find did you, it I, 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 I did find it disaster averted i was <laughs> sorry i was looking down too much and i caught glimpses of something else anyway <laughs> i keep forgetting <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh oh, no. all right anyway <laughs> so typically when a, so when a u.s commuter is in traffic they typically take up a lot of gas which means they take up a lot of money how much ga- how many gallons of fuel does an average commuter lose in traffic e- in a in a year okay. is it 21 15 35 or 48 gallons gallons per of gas. year 
per eight in a year, how much gas will a common US commuter lose? Twenty one. What was A again? Gunners, a was twenty one. What was B again? B was fifteen. What was C again? Thirty five. Okay. And uh, what was D again? God, game is <laughs> second. Forty is forty eight. All right, I'm gonna say forty eight gallons. That's a lot. I'm gonna say C. Was C thirty five? C was thirty five. Yeah, C. Okay. What about you, Ben? Um, I am gonna say forty eight. Forty-eight. All right. Well, one of you was correct. Whoa. That person who was correct was, in fact, Mister Gunner, Whoa. with his funny answer of twenty-one yes. gallons. <laughs> Can we get this? A- this oh, college here, I come. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get a twenty-one sound effect? Okay, uh, editor, add that in yeah, right editor, now. Add that in right now. Twenty-one. Right now. Again. Twenty-one. Again. 21. And again, all right, now cool. three, t- three times in a row. Why, all right, why, why? play it fifty-eight times. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, 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 do it where it's like slowed and like it's like it's like twenty-one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and also, editor, another thing: don't use the for this next twenty-one. Don't use the vine one. Use the one Gunner used earlier. Twenty-one. All right. <laughs> twenty-one. <laughs> This is all gonna get cut out. I don't know. What I'm doing. <laughs> but don't, anyway, what what do you what what do you want? Don't be so sure. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> this statistic actually came. This statistic about uh con- consumption of gal of fuel was actually founded in 2017. 21 gallons actually roughly estimates around to at that time 1,080 dollars in wasted fuel. Wow. That is. That is a lot of money gone just from sitting and doing nothing yeah. on on a highway interstate, and that mm. could be, and that's just the average. It could be a lot more for uh, for others, like especially us who have to commute on four sixty five or any other highway. Mm-hmm. But uh, this is probably yeah. more in realism to like someone who tr- commutes to like NYC or Boston. And like I think the average commute uh, is seventeen minutes. I want to say uh, from home to work and ho- work to home, like it's seventeen minutes each. And Ben and I drive half an hour or greater to work, not even counting traffic. So it's probably higher for us. Yeah, yeah. Mine's usually probably thirty-five on a good yep. day. Mine's thirty-two on a good day. I yep. see. I see. I see. All right, next question here on our uh, come and come. I'm, I'm just going to keep going forward. Anyway, <laughs> so there are many reasons as to why traffic may occur on the road. What mm-hmm. is one of the primary? What is the primary cause for traffic jams in the U.S.? Is it A, accidents, mm-hmm. B, rush hour traffic and result due to people leaving work? C, road construction, or D, none of the above? Mm, I'm going to say none of the above. None of the above? I see. All right. I, what about, it just what about feels you? weird for being in there. Yeah. If, wow, what if it was just there to throw you off? That's what I'm thinking. I think the answer is C, construction. I Ooh. am going to go rush. I, 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 okay, in my heart, I think it might be construction, but I'm going to go rush hour. I see. What if I told you... You, two of you were wrong, but one of you was right. I would be too surprised. And that person, and, the, and yeah. that person, and that person right is one step closer to getting his college tuition paid off. Oh, Miss Gunner, you are correct wow. once more. Wow! This I'm actually glad someone got right because now it's my time to explain to you all about. If do you guys know what the term phantom jam is? I believe I've heard it. Yes. What about you? What about you, Gunner or Ben? Nope. None. Phantom jams are the primary cause as to why a traffic jam occurs. And the reason why it's called a phantom jam, it is because of that odd occurrence where you're sitting in traffic and you realize that a lot of those things that I listed earlier aren't occurring. And you're one, you're just sitting there wondering, why am I stuck in traffic right now? Mm-hmm. Well, phantom jams is a, is a type of traffic jam that is caused by drivers who, surprisingly enough, drive too fast and then stop suddenly. 
Mm -hmm. So an example of this would be if just one car who is at the head of the of the trap or at the interstate or whatever immediately hits the brakes. This will cause obviously a chain reaction of people who are also driving on the interstate also stopping their brakes, which they'll break even harder to avoid any collisions. And this chain of brakes and reactions will slowly and slowly merge into what we all see as the typical the typical traffic jam. Wow. wow. So the reason why traffic jams occur are is because people are in a rush to get home. Yeah. So, so, so by saying, which I think I, I find is very ironic to say the least. So, but what I did just hear is that rush hour does have something to do with it. So I think I deserve. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, no, 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 it's a, a statistic. No, 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 no. You don't get, you don't get, you get nothing. You get nothing. All right. Rush hour is just doing some example. Okay. Uh huh. I, I just want to remind everybody that Dylan is still naked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Dylan's like a you know reliable source right now. <laughs> he is naked after all. Oh. I mean, yeah. come on, you guys trust some weird people, all right? Is this the is it most bizarre to trust somebody who's naked right now? I mean, this is where I draw the line. <laughs> don't don't draw too close. <laughs> oh my god! All right, let us move on to the next question here in our very fun and and thing. Uh, uh, I'm, I, now I'm forgetting the name of the game show that I came. Come up and with. go, come and come and go. Yes. Traffic quiz mania, electric boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Now, here is our the next question. So con congestion, of course, get, is pretty bad, though. Obviously, traffic jams and congestion matter a lot more depending on what day of the week it is. Hmm. So with that being considered, what day of the week is the worst for traffic to occur? Would hmm. it be a Monday? B Wednesday? Uh, C Friday? Or D Thursday. I I don't know. I'm gonna go with my gut and say Friday, just because not only are you getting uh, weekday traffic, you know, rush hour, but also people starting the weekend, so they're wanting to do other things. They're like wanting to go shopping or something. I know Friday is a pretty busy day for my store uh, because people who just left work stop and go shopping, and then of course after that they have to go home, so they're just making extra stops. I see. What about you, Gunner and or Ben? And I agree with Gabe. Okay. Um, I actually um, I feel like I feel like logically Friday would make the most sense, mm -hmm. but with my own personal experience, um, especially on my way to work, I always get caught in a traffic jam the worst and most frequently on Mondays. So I'm gonna say Monday. Oh. Monday. All right. Well. Unfortunately, none of you got this right. Oh, because Thursday. the most it is Thursday indeed. Oh, I had a gut feeling too, but I just didn't want to go with it because I. Oh, that's why. That's why I was actually kind of mentioning the whole Toronto thing earlier, is to kind of give you a hint oh. as to because okay. as I had mentioned to you, you know, like you know that was on a Thursday, and it's okay, kind of Dylan. funny and. I change my answer to Thursday. So do I get the uh, point? Gabe gets it right. <laughs> yes, Gabe gets it right. Yes. <laughs> how, however, since I do feel generous, the difference in how busy traffic is on Thursday compared to Friday is very, very close. Mm -hmm. And Thursday just beats it by a bit. So mm -hmm. with that being said, I am going to be giving both Gunner and Gabe a point. Ooh. $10 I, here I, I, I come. I will say though, if someone did say Thursday, they would have gone. It was only them I was going to get the points. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no bias here. Which means Gunner is still one step closer to paying off his his. Uh, I almost said high school tuition. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> high school is expensive, man. I barely got school. by. <laughs> I barely got by. All right. Well, now for this last bit, this one is going to be kind of like a Jeopardy question, almost, or a final Jeopardy question, almost. Okay. I'd like so, to solve the puzzle. All right. <laughs> solve <it>. Grandma. <laughs> what, nigga? <huh? laughs> Let's see it. <laughs> Let's see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good answer. Good answer. 
Guys, what if the price was wrong? <gasps> no! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> okay, let's... <laughs> All right, so... Right now, I am actually... I'm, uh, I'm finishing up this real quick because I uh, made a boo-boo and I accidentally deleted the formatting I had set up for this question, and this is, like, really sad. But what I'm going to be doing for this last question is I'm going to be giving you guys 10 cities... And what the thing about these 10 cities and the state that they are located in is that they are the top 10 cities in the U.S. where traffic is, you know, by far the worst. And mm -hmm. this is in terms of how many hours are lost in congestion once again in a year. Mm -hmm. So this is just like for the individual like U.S. citizen who is like driving home from work. This is like, you know, for the whole entire like place as a whole. OK, you know. So well, let me go ahead real quick and finish gathering all of these things. Oh my god, I just almost did the exact thing I messed up earlier with. This is, I'm, I'm telling you guys right now, this is hard to do naked. <laughs> <laughs> like, you guys might not believe me, but just, just trust me on this. Trust mm -hmm. me. This is, this is terrible. Dylan keeps getting oh distracted by his sausage and eggs. I, I'm sorry. It, it's too hard. to. I can't keep my eyes off of it. All right. It's just like I I look at it and then I go. Woo, woo. <laughs> the natural reaction to seeing your own genitals. <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. All right. So in our little chat right now, I have listed 10 of the mo okay. of you know of some of the biggest cities in the US. I think you all recognize them pretty well. I mean, yeah. if you don't, then you definitely you got there's a problem there. Um so what I'm going to have each of you guys do now is I'm going to have you guys pretty much do whatever you want with those things and rank them from the most congested what you think in your opinion is to the least congested. Okay. And whoever is the closest in terms of being as accurate to the official list that I have here will receive five points. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, let's go ahead and all type it whoever out. Whoever gets closest wins. Yeah. Uh, whoever. Mm. Okay. Let's all type it out. Uh, let's cut here and then go back when we're done typing it out and uh, read them off. Does that sound good? That sounds yeah. good. All, all right. right. Cool. Funny segue noise right now. <laughs> that was such a funny segue. That was, that was really uh, good. Yeah, oh really my good. goodness. All right, so now everybody, do you have your uh, top 10 cities ordered out now? I sure I do. do. Amazing. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to be going down uh, from whoever has the most points currently to who has the least points. So, Gunner, right now, at a total of three points, you're in the lead. So, please go ahead and show us what you have as your top 10 ranked. <laughs> you know <laughs> now, what was that sound made from, Dylan? Don't, don't, I was getting excited. <laughs> anyway, Gunner. Yeah. Gunner, please li read out aloud so all the, our lovely viewers can hear what you have written down. All right. So at number one, I put Los uh, LA, then okay. I put, uh, New York City, okay. then Chicago, okay. then San Francisco, okay. then Washington, D.C., okay. Philadelphia, okay. then Boston, okay. then Pittsburgh, Okay. Seattle, okay. and then Portland. All righty. Thank you, Gunner. I will tell. I'll, I'll once again say the results once we uh, get to the end here. So next up is Gabe with one point. So uh, my list is very similar to Gunner's. Uh, number one is New York City. Number two is Los Angeles. Number three is Chicago. So we have that together. Uh, number four is Washington, D.C. And the reason I put it there is because a lot of government officials drive between New York and Washington, uh, a lot all the time. Uh, and then number five, I put San Francisco. Number six, I put Seattle just because I remember going to Seattle was pretty trafficy. Seven was Boston. Eight was Philly. Nine was Portland. And then 10 was Pittsburgh. All right. Thank you, Gabe. Now, Ben, at last place with zero whole points. <laughs> uh, that's okay. I don't, I don't want any points from a naked man anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right well you better hope you don't get this question right then because then i won't be giving you anymore dirty all slippery right. money um okay so uh for number one i said new york city then chicago los angeles washington dc san francisco seattle boston pittsburgh philly and portland okay now thank you all for your responses 
Now I will go ahead and begin doing a little mm -hmm. mental run through of each of your guys' list. Um, let me go here. How do you guys all feel? Do you all feel confident about your answers? Oh, no. not entirely, but you know, I, I agree with my own list, which is a start. You agree with your own list. Yeah. You know, say, I, I think that's, that's what all that matters at the end yeah. of the day. Whoever made this list, they know what's going on. <laughs> all right. What about, what about you, Gunner and or Ben? I've never experienced these cities, uh, most of these cities myself, so it's uh, kind of hard to think. Fair enough, I guess. What about you, Ben? Um, yeah, I, I think I feel I feel okay with mine. Um, I think all of ours are, are fairly similar, um, not too too wildly off. So, no, yeah. you guys definitely had a very common trend going here, and I was really hoping one of you guys would do something specific because then that would be quite ironic. But each of you have your own list formatted in a very different way which does make this very, very difficult for deciding <laughs> who has the most difficult list. But obviously, I have now, I believe, come to a verdict of who I believe has the most accurate list. Okay. So, I will go ahead and start from the bottom, and we'll go up. Okay, so we're starting with the least of the most, right? The least of the most, okay. correct. Coming in at 116 hours... Of of you know time lost and, conge and congestion due to traffic, we have Portland, Oregon with a with okay. you know like, like I said earlier, 116. Ben and Gunner, you both got that correct. Nice. Woo. At number nine with a with also at a hundred and hold on, I hold on, I completely mis mixed that up. Oh, that is embarrassing. Uh, number ten, it's actually Philly. <laughs> Philly is number oh. ten. Uh, I yeah I don't know what the hell happened there that four minute got messed up that is wow once again very embarrassing very very sorry um he's naked guys don't yeah. Yeah. don't worry sorry Do looked looked at the genitals again yeah and getting distracted happened. oh man I'm sorry it's just it's so hypnotizing but anyway <laughs> tied tied the reason why this got mixed up is because number nine and number eight are actually tied okay. um, with each other. And that being realist, that being Portland, Oregon, and San Fran both tally in at 116 oh, wow. hours. Wow. Uh, wow. So, yeah. So Ben, uh, Ben and Gabe, you both got that uh, correct. It seems. Ooh. Got so you each got a. a, a <laughs> Did you see your genitals, Gabe? Is that what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I kind of wanted to join Dylan. It seemed fun. <laughs> All right, number seven, we have good old. Let me just double check to make sure the formatting didn't get messed up here again. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, with 127 mm, hours. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah, so right now, I mean, it's. it's, it's we're, I mean, you guys, I, I bet you're all still feeling confident about your answers, though, still. I mean, you're, none of the answers that you have in the top five have been listed yet, I don't think. Yeah, nope. All right. Number six. We have ooh, Los Angeles, California no with 128 way. hours. No wow. way. Okay, I think this list just lost credibility because when we were in LA, the 405, oh, oh, no, no. I mean, this was, this, this was done in 2018, <laughs> so, you know, times have changed. You know, yeah, the but I mean, like, people are leaving LA, not 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 moving there right now i don't i don't know i i just remember that was the worst traffic i think of and that was on the interstate uh i can't imagine downtown la traffic well it only made number what did i say number six, six. Yeah, six. number six on this list so that's it's a big wrench in your plans i bet number five is going to even stump you even more because at number five is New York City, New Whoa. York. Wow. With only 133 hours. Wow. Dang. Now, number number four and third are once again tied with each other. Okay. These two cities that are tied, both at 138 hours, being Seattle, Washington, and Chicago, Illinois. Huh. Ooh, I got one right. I got one right, Chicago. 
<laughs> now, for number two, with 155 hours, we have Washington, D.C. Yeah, okay, that's which why I put means mine up only there. one thing left is Boston, Massachusetts, Ma Massachusetts <laughs> clocking in at 164 hours. Boston. Dang. I never would have guessed. I never would have guessed. I put it at seven. I know. I, that's. I, I was like, honestly, I don't blame you guys for wait. setting up your lists in that way. But, wait, wait, we all put we all put Boston as seven. Every single one <laughs> yeah, of us put did. Boston as seven. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I <don't. laughs> I, that's why I well, like I said. There's a lot of interesting trends, but one trend I thought you all, I thought all would have gone was having Chicago in third, but then Ben had to go and mess it up and <laughs> put it in second for some reason. But yeah, well, horror stories. Okay. Oh yeah. While I do my last final check of everything here, I mean, how do you all feel about these now shocking truths revealed about these cities? I, and I don't. I. It's insane. I got, I've never, I've never, okay, so I've been to Seattle and the traffic was bad, but I don't remember it being LA bad. I don't remember it being Chicago bad even. I don't the, know. the thing for me is, um, so I, I'm like, I'm, I put Washington DC like fairly low because I, I put it at number four because I figured um, that their transportation, like public transportation I, it's so big there. I thought I thought traffic wouldn't be nearly as bad on the streets, but I kept I was wrong. And I, I bet that's why New York City was only number five because a, like a lot a lot of people there rely on public transportation. Yeah, this is very very true. So now that I have tallied up everything, because I'm I'm going off of a metric based on who you know landed them correctly and who just has them closer in proximity with one mm -hmm. another. Gunner is the ultimate victor here. Wow, wow, undefeated, and undefeated! Congratulations, Gunner! Your whole entire tuition for this year at Purdue is now paid off thanks to the Ooh. Dylan Dylan to, thanks to the Dylan Wiley Foundation. <laughs> that pays Ronald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah 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 how do you feel about receiving 10 bucks from a naked man um <laughs> just a, just another what sunday for for gunner just another sunday no. what, are you, what are you typically doing on your sundays then <laughs> hanging out Going with Dylan. Naked man, i guess yeah <laughs> Oh my god. All right. Well, that'll do it for the main part of today's show. Okay. Now, I believe moving on, I believe we have some interesting news to be talking about. Am I wrong or am I correct? Oh, you are correct. Oh boy. So, as always, I get this news straight from the Associated Press. This time, I didn't read straight from it though because I don't think that's good. I'm I need to start paraphrasing. So, uh, would you guys consider yourselves arachnophobes? Uh, yes. I, I, I just don't like bugs in general, so I guess to an extent, you, yes. If you see a spider on your wall, you, you kind of want to kill it or get it away? Kind of I, thing. I actually, it depends on where it is in my house. If yeah. it's in like uh, my living room, whatever. If it's in my bathroom, it's on site. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gunnar, what about you? I, I don't like to kill bugs because I know mm. bugs do a lot of good. So, I just... Let them do their own thing, and um, I mind my business. All right. Well, uh, if you were to kill a spider, what is your guys' preferred method of killing a spider? Shoe stomping. Shoe? Getting a bite. I typically, what I always had is like big books with like flat surfaces. Ah, and okay. Like, okay. Gives me a lot of room to just like cover them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with Dylan. Um, largest surface available. So what I'm getting from this is that it needs to be a quick death. Painless yep. even for the spider. Yeah. Well, that's not really what I'm going for. Yeah. But, but you know, I as a side to... effect of you wanting the spider gone, it is a relatively painless death. Yeah. Well, um, I noticed none of you guys mentioned fire, uh, which is probably a good thing uh, because this guy's preferred method of spider assassination caused a wildfire in Utah just a few days ago. Uh, he, well. he saw a spider on a trail outside, it, frankly, where the spider lives. Uh, I think if anything, the humans, the intruder there, uh, and he just went 
time to light it on fire. I mean, that's that's the, the rational thing to do. So the wildfire started just south of Salt Lake City, Utah, and quickly spread up a mountain to just under one square mile of land. No homes were damaged except for maybe the spider's house. Um, oh quote, what led him to stop and notice a spider and decide to try to burn it? We don't know, said Utah County Sheriff Sergeant Spencer Cannon. Quote, there may not be a why. He might not even know why. <laughs> Which I think, is, I think is a fair assumption. I mean, no. Like, uh, how stupid do you have to be <laughs> to get scared of a spider in the wild yeah. and then burn it in a forest? Mans was literally just sitting there on eight legs, walking in his home, and a man got out a match. <laughs> Um, oh, sure. it was a match. I thought it was like the well, good old no, fashioned no, no. lighter it, it with probably, like a it, hairspray thing. It, it, maybe, maybe the sheriff's office. The sheriff's office did mention they found marijuana on him, but he didn't seem high. So this was a, this was a lucid. Like he knew what he was doing. Uh, and the one positive to the story is that I mean, I think he achieved his goal of killing the spider, considering just under a square mile of land is now up in flames. Well, I mean, he probably killed like hundreds of spiders that day. Yeah, I mean, he he was arrested. He's on like a two thousand dollar bond or something. So I mean, only two thousand. I mean, justice was it served. Should be two thousand and one dollars. Yeah, at exactly. least. That's at what least. I'm saying. Uh, but no, he was arrested. Uh, so he's he's facing his come up. It's not only because of the wildfire, reckless, you know, endangerment. Not really. I don't think that'd be what it was. But also because he's carrying marijuana and it's Utah. So. Yeah, he um, was he was that, arrested. That was that was the concern, not the guy burning down a forest. Well, no, no, no. Bo- both, both of them. Both of them. Both of them. I think they just wanted to get him for as much as they could. <laughs> oh so uh, rest in peace, spider. If we could have a moment of silent silence for the uh, spider that lost its life. Um, and Gabe, if you can maybe play like um, um, taps, taps, yeah. <laughs> taps. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, moment of silence. All right, please take your hats off. Eight seconds for every leg that was lost that day. All right. That's longer than a vine. <laughs> That's what the spider will be known for. He was longer than a vine. <laughs> Can't fit that in six seconds. All right. Um, what's next? You want to do your pharmacy drug fact, Gunnar Johnson? I sure do. So today we are talking about um, blood thinners. So um, a lot of people um, will get put on warfarin as a blood thinner, mm-hmm. and um, warfarin is uh, quite an interesting drug. The thing about warfarin is we really know everything about it. So um, basically, you have every side effect that could pa- possibly go down. Um, but the problem is, is warfarin is super toxic. Oh. Uh, it is actually nicknamed rat poison. Oh. Ooh. Anyways, so there have been some alternatives of blood thinners that, um, you know, doctors are trying to prescribe instead of warfarin uh, due to its um, toxicity. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of these would include Eliquis or Xarelto, which you might see commercials for on TV. Anyways, and uh, both of which are uh, blood thinners that are relatively new. Um, but relatively uh, um, effective. Nice. So, um, but they come at one cost. Once you start, you cannot stop. Oh, oh! <laughs> and you know what? It also comes at another cost, a very expensive one, because they are still under their uh, brand names. Yeah, there's no generic version of them yet. Nope, because they were just released uh, within the last couple of years. That's wonderful. Oh, that is. Oh, wow. Wow. Anyways, but that's a conversation for another time. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. So there you go. Um, if you don't want to be on Warfarin because of how toxic it is, I uh, get on uh, Eliquis or Zeralto. And if you don't want to be on Eliquis and Zeralto uh, because of its price, then uh, closely monitor yourself on Warfarin. May I ask why you it can't sure stop? You... Um, yeah, so 
basically Eliquist and Zarelto both have this mechanism of where um, they are. So they basically last about 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and so um, if you just stop, um, they're very short acting, not mm-hmm. long acting. Um, so you have to take them consistently. Uh, in order for them to uh, actually continue to work. Okay. And most people who are on these types of blood thinners, because these are very serious blood yeah. thinners, there are a lot of other ones, um, are ones that cannot afford to have um, their uh, blood pressure rise like that. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. Yep. So there you go. Nice. Thank you very much, Gunner. Before we do move on to our uh, musical artist of the week, I do have a Roblox game recommendation, if you all wouldn't mind if I shared yes. right now. Yes. All righty. Well, I know back a few episodes ago, I had recommended a game called Project Lazarus, mm-hmm. which was a um, co-op uh, zombie survival game similar to how Black Ops Zombies is or Call of Duty Zombies is. What if you took that game and you made it better? That's what you get out of a game called Michael Zombies, a much more well-developed and more advanced version of Project Lazarus with a lot more cool, fun, hidden things that you can do and just overall general better mechanics, like just better mechanics all in all. So if you want to have an even better zombie survival game than you do with Project Lazarus, I would definitely recommend playing Michael Zombies. Cool. All right. Good deal. All righty. Now... Ready? I'm ready. I'm artist of the week. I am so ready. All right. I will start today's local artist of the week with a question. Do you guys know what shoegaze is? No. It is a subgenre. And let's let's just read the definition. Shoegaze, originally called shoegazing and sometimes conflated with dream pop, is a subgenre of indie and alternative rock characterized by its ethereal mixture of obscured vocals guitar distortion and effects, feedback, and overwhelming volume. So very, it, it said it itself, very ethereal, very like out of body um, kind of, I guess, indie alternative rock. Uh, we've had one um, shoegaze artist on the local artist of the week before, and that was actually our first ever local artist of the week, and that was Northwest. They described themselves as a little bit of shoegaze. Uh, but we have another one. And I'm very excited for it. I really wanted another shoegaze artist on the podcast. They are called Sleepkeeper. They are based in Terre Haute, Indiana, and they only have 76 monthly listeners. And I think we should change that. I really like this one. Yeah. And they were also super cool when I talked to them. They were super down. Um, We agreed on the song to uh, play on here. Uh, I like this one in particular. It's called Paper Knife. You guys ready? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. Mm, Yep. What did you guys think? Oh, I felt something weird. (laughs) But no, that was really, really good. And I really like that a lot. Very like, I mean, like you said, it's very reminiscent of the same genre that our first song was like. And I really love uh, that vibe. Yes. It's like you feel like you're floating when you're listening to music like that. Just so, so much is going on. It's so it's oh, it's it's a it's a wonderful feeling. It's very moving. In my opinion, I love the sound. What do you guys? What about Ben and Gunner? I thought it was yeah. It just seemed very ethereal. Yeah, it was yeah. It was just like you know, I could close my eyes and feel like I was just somewhere else. Exactly. I kind of got the uh, 
just as like a, maybe like a, a like a late night drive like yep exactly super dark exactly. outside and this is just what you listen to with the windows down a little yep. bit of cool air coming in or you're just laying down on your bed with the lights off in the middle of the night and you're just li- I I can it's totally oh I love I love I love the sound so definitely go check them out uh, on Spotify they are Sleepkeeper and then on Instagram let me find their exact at real quick. Well, while, while Gabe does that, Sleepkeeper, I just want to let you know you're in my playlist now. M- my main playlist, so that's, that's a big achievement to hold. Yes, uh, they are sleep underscore keeper underscore band. So definitely go check them out. Very, very nice. All right, well, thank you, Gabe, for that. But now I think it might be time for the best, worst part of every show of Reality with a Twist. That being, what are the odds? Yes. Gabe, since you're the best at explaining it, would you please do the honors? Okay, so what are the odds is a combination of a dare and a bet. There is one person who sets the odds and one person who asks the odds. The asker basically dares the uh, one party to do a certain dare, and then the other party sets the likelihood of themselves doing that. The higher the number, the more likely they are to have. To, I mean, the less likely they are to have to do it. A third party counts down from three, three, two, one, and then the asker and asky say a number between one and the number they set at the same time. And if they say the same number, they have to do it. And on the show, if for some reason none of our odds, individual odds, hit, we do a descending odds which is pretty self-explanatory. You will understand it if we get to that. Okay. All right. Well, who would like to go first? I can go first. Okay. All right. I'd like to save mine for a little bit later just okay. to... Sure. Okay. Um... Dylan, we'll go with the host of the show. Oh, God. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> what are the odds that for your next episode that you host, you have to let us decide your topic and you have to do it? <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Oh, I really like that one, actually. I'll say five. All right. Oh, okay. I'll count down. Three, two, one. Two. Three. Oh, oh no. nards! I really like that though. I mean, yeah, that's the a really good one. Of it. Yeah. All right, I will go next. Um, okay, Ben. Yes. What are the odds that you just get a cup of water and you just dump it on your head right now? Oh come on! Just, just some water. <laughs> it's not even. It's not even sticky. It's not sweet. Just a, a cup of water and you just dump it on your head. What water is sticky and sweet? I'm saying it's not like it's not like it's because we had an odds in the past that it was Coke. We had had to dump Coke on your head. But no, oh, it's yeah. not Coke. It's water uh, this time. So it's not going to be like sticky like it would have been that time. Oh, um, <laughs> I don't want to dump a glass of water on my head at 1138 <laughs> p.m. on a Sunday night. <laughs> so I'm going to say. Uh, I'm just I'm going to say. 17. 17. Right. Okay. I'll count I'll count you guys down. All right. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Four. One. Oh. Darn. 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 Yeah. Dylan, do you want to go or do you want me to go? Uh, you go. If you have one, of course. Oh, I do. All right. So, uh, Dylan. Oh, uh, yeah. What are the odds you go? Run around your house in your current state of slavery. <laughs> that is a risky, risky game. <laughs> oh, I really do not want to play that. 75. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. 71. 67. Ooh, four away. 67 and 71, correct? Yep. That was close. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, Gabe. Yes. What are the odds that for the next episode of for the next episode that you host of Reality with a Twist? Mm-hmm. You Oh, what was I going to say? You have <laughs> to mention 
then you have to um, sound like a little girl the whole entire episode. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. gosh. Guys, on my next episode, I'm going to be talking about the history of Gary, Indiana. That's so <laughs> dark and depressing. I could be like this the entire time. <laughs> 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 oh, oh no wow. I, want to say, I want to say 25 okay, okay I'll count down alright 3 2 1 4 12 ooh 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 smooth with right. it so let's examine the four odds that we have on the table now we have pouring water on the head Yes. One that was mainly specific for me, and that included running around naked in the house. <laughs> but I think we can extend that to anybody who dares to take that chance. Ooh. Um, having the other members choose the next, the, the one specific member's next topic for the show, and talking like a little girl for the entire episode that you're hosting. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I would personally vote for uh, the choosing the next episode. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm good with that I, too. I'm good with that as well. Okay. All right. All right. Well, who would like to start off first and what would you like your odds to be? I'll start off. Okay. Four. I knew you were uh, going to say that. Ah, oh, man. Okay. Then uh, who would like to say the number with Gunner? I'll say it with Gunner. I'll count you guys down. All right. Three, two, one. Three. One. Oh no. Here's a go to next. Uh, I'll last go. Time when you do this on the Swedish Yeah, show. I'll go next. Okay. I mean, kind of make this easy on yourself, Gabe. There's only four of us. <laughs> <laughs> Might backfire on me too. Who knows? All right. Three. Two. Let's say the number. I'll say it with him. Okay. Three, two, one. Two. One. Oh Ooh. no. Ooh. Um, then you go next. <laughs> <laughs> I'll count uh, down this okay. time. I'll see the number. All right. Three, two, one. One, two. two. No! Wait, what? no! Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Why did Dylan Wait, go two? Must... Okay, 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 yeah, okay, okay. okay. Re, re, let's, can, you, can we agree to redo no, no, that? No, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. okay, that, okay. Was, that was Gunner and Ben. I was counting down. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Two. Two. Oh Ooh. my god! I th- oh, sorry. I'm sorry about that. I thought I was seeing the number with it, but <laughs> thank God. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, I guess ben? we have to come out. We'll come up with a topic for his next episode. Which is, that's next. That's, that's the next, next one. episode. Yeah. Oh man, you got you viewers are in luck. <laughs> should, okay, should should we come up with that on this episode or should we just surprise? I, I think I, we should surprise because yeah. this is. I, yeah. I'm gonna need some thought on this one. Yeah, I'm me need too. Some thought on this deep one too. thought, deep thought. But viewers, you will all know what the next topic is. You know, next episode next week. So be on the lookout for that because I can guarantee you, with the three of our minds working together, it's gonna be a spicy topic. It'll still be a good episode, us. though. I'm sure. You're right. The only thing I ask is keep it family friendly. Well, I mean, no, no. no. <laughs> We're only talking about murder. We're talking about Ben. Talk about your cock balls. Whoa! <laughs> All right. All righty. Well, I think that'll do it for today's episode of Reality with a Twist. Mm-hmm. I'm Dylan. I'm Gunner. I'm Gabriel. I'm Ben. And and we will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Laters, Gators.